This morning at approximately 5.30 a.m., maybe just a few minutes before that, a charter bus uh, traveling westbound on Interstate 10 uh, apparently uh, got into the median of the interstate and ended up going down into a ravine underneath the suspended bridges that cross Cowpen Creek near the 54 mile marker. Um, this bus was occupied uh, by approximately 45 individuals, uh, EMS and of course uh, Sheriff's Office, state troopers and multiple others were dispatched to the scene. Just within the past five minutes, uh, the last victim has been removed from the wreckage. Uh, this has been an extensive rescue operation. We've had to shut down both lanes of Interstate 10, and we're still asking that people will avoid Interstate 10 probably for the next two to three hours as now Aaliyah begins to work the accident. At this time, we're not going to identify the bus company nor we're going to identify the individuals because we're still attempting to notify parents. We will confirm that there is one fatality uh, that is on the bus. Uh, we will also confirm that this bus is from the state of Texas. Uh, it is not a local bus. We have been in contact with various authorities in Texas who are assisting us in the process. And we will confirm that the bus uh, was a group of high school age students from that area traveling back from the central Florida area. Um, of the individuals that were injured, they have been transported to approximately 10 different area hospitals and trauma centers. Uh, Sacred Heart Hospital in Pensacola, Baptist Hospital, University of West Florida, South Baldwin Regional Medical Center, Thomas Hospital, Thomas Hospital Urgent Care in Daphne, and USA Hospital. Uh, the individuals, uh, approximately uh, six to seven medevac helicopters are utilized in the extrication process. A dozen fire departments. Florida Highway Patrol also assisted us. We were in the process of also working with the Florida Emergency Management Agency and the Baldwin County Emergency Management Agency. Uh, individuals from the state of Texas are en route at this time uh, to assist with this. And as I said, from this point forward, uh, Alabama Law Enforcement Agency state troopers will be working the accident. At this time, I'll allow uh, District Attorney Bob Wilters if he has any comments. All I can ask y'all to do is please pray for these young people and uh, the families that were involved. Uh, it's a horrific accident uh, that you can see down there. Also, uh, just stay away from this area. Uh, there's a, still a lot of law enforcement uh, down there, rescue people. Uh, so pray for these uh, young people that were involved in the wreck and, and uh, those who have had to work it. We have established a telephone number uh, that individuals can call. It is the Baldwin County uh, Call Center. That number is 251-972-6801. Six eight zero seven two five one nine seven two six eight zero seven. Uh, that is for individuals if they are trying to locate family members or get an update. We're currently compiling the manifest uh, on those individuals um, that will uh, of hospitals where these people have been taken and uh, where they'll eventually be released from. Uh, the one thing that I did not mention, I know, will be a question of the individuals transported, uh, we believe to be uh, one critical and approximately five in serious condition at this time, with the rest of the injuries pretty much being minor injuries that were handled either by triage on scene or handled at the hospitals once they were transported. We did have one Baldwin County Sheriff's deputy injured uh, during the extrication process, but his injuries are going to be minor and he'll be fine. And Sheriff, as far as you know, the, the bus, was that the only vehicle involved in this crash? At this time, we believe so. Uh, we do believe that there were possibly two buses that were traveling together. Uh, this would have been the bus that would have been in the rear. Uh, the other bus we do not believe was involved and, in fact, is en route to Texas as we speak. These students had to be uh, extricated, like you said. But were, they, were they trapped at any one point where they had to use jaws of life, things like that? Yes, to all the above. The bus came to rest on one side down in the ravine. 
Uh, those had to either be uh, brought up by uh, ropes and repelling individuals from the fire department during the rescue operation. Uh, some were carried out by deputies and other law enforcement. Uh, the ravine is approximately 50 feet deep. And uh, so that's one of the things that uh, took so long in the extrication process. The latest one, as I said, just approximately 10 minutes ago had to be cut from the wreckage using rescue tools. As far as a cause, can you comment on uh, as to what happened? Here? No, I, I, I really just don't know at this point. Uh, all we know is that the bus at some point in time ended up in the median and ended up in the ravine. So a Leo will be handling that part of the investigation. When it comes to traffic uh, and how long it'll take to perhaps, you know, clean up the scene, uh, you know, just assess everything out there, uh, motorists traveling I-10, how long do you think this will be? I would say at least plan on this part of the interstate being closed until noon. Uh, once we get to a point, we'll try to open up one lane each way. But right now, at least till noon, uh, individuals going from Alabama to Florida need to utilize U.S. Highway 90 or Highway 112. Individuals from Florida tried to get in Alabama to use the same as well. Uh, because once, as the rescue effort is now complete, now we have to remove the fatality from the scene. And then once that's done, then uh, we'll have to get the bus up as well. And that's going to cause a, a little bit of traffic congestion probably for the majority of the day.